Okay, now, so we did function, and now we have to do, we have to understand here inverse function. So before inverse function, inverse function, we have to know what is inverse image. What is inverse image? So if a function f is defined from a to b, if a function f is defined from a to b then for every y belongs to b for every y belongs to b x is equal to f inverse y x is equal to f inverse y is called inverse image. We can see by arrow diagram there is this is a function. This is a function f if x is the domain and their image is y is equal to fx. This is the image. Y is the image of x, x is called pre-image of y. But what, what is called inverse image? So just like, so this is a function, so we have to, so inverse function is defined in opposite way there is, there is f inverse. It is written like that, f inverse. So what is called inverse? So while we do inverse functions, for the inverse function, this will this will become a domain and that will become a range. Just like y is the image of x in inverse. So for inverse functions, domain is y and their image is x. So inverse image of y is x. That is why f inverse carry f becomes carry y becomes x. So this way we can define inverse image. So we are saying inverse function. So first of all we have to think about the function. So inverse function, so it is a function. So we have to, first of all we have to think about that. In inverse it is satisfying the definition of function or not. So for that I will show you through the arrow diagram which function have an inverse or not. That we have to understand first. Which function have an inverse? So first in arrow diagram all the function I will take. First function I will take it is like that. Suppose A, B, C. There is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here is here is this is a function is it function or not yes how because for every element of a domain for every element of domain it has unique image a has image one so a do not have any other image that is this is a function now i will take another one A, B, I will take there A, B, 1, 2, 3, okay, A with the 1, B with the 2, here is C also, 
and C has relation with this and suppose I will remove one from here so A has okay A has relation 1 1 2 3 and uh, there is also another element I will take as D here but D has element 3 now let's see here is it function or not is this function or not so a has image every element of function has a relation with b or not yes and it is unique or not yes c has element c has a relation with 3 but c do not have any other relation d has element uh, relation with the 3 but d do not have any other relation that is why we can say this is a function now i will take another function there is a b c 1 2 and 3 here it is here it is here it is okay this is also function these all are all three are function now let's differentiate so all are the functions but what is the difference between them let's see what is this function this function is a one to one function one to one function, one one function says that the element of B must have unique pre image. Element of B, not every element, just element of B. So, element of B has unique pre image. One has unique pre image, two has unique pre image, three has unique pre image. That is why this is one to one. This is unto function. Is it one to one? No, because three do not have a unique pre image. So, this is not a one to one function. This is unto function. Because every element of B must have pre-image, not unique, must have pre-image. So, every element have pre-image, that is why this is a unto function. This is one to one unto function. Now, let's see. If we have to find inverse, can we, inverse means we have to go back, we have to reverse way, we have to think about that. So if I will, I want to know about that, is it? Is it inverse function? If I if I want to find inverse, so can inverse function defined here? No. Let's see here how. Because inverse function, if we, if you are saying inverse function going this way, so for inverse function that will becomes a domain and that because that is becomes co-domain. So inverse function means it is a function. In a fun, what is the definition of function? Every element of a domain must have a unique relation. But every element has. So one has, two has relation, three, but four do not have. That is why inverse function does not exist. This is not a function. If you go through the this way, in the inverse way, so then you cannot say that this is a function. Now let's see here. So inverse function does not define here. Now here is inverse function. So if you go through the inverse. Is, is inverse function defined here or not? So, for every element of a domain, yes, every element have a relation. But what is the definition? Every element must have unique relation. Is it is every ele element have a unique relation? So one has a unique relation. Two has a unique. Is three have a unique relation? No. Three has three does not have unique relation. That is why here is also f inverse does not exist. So, for just if a function is one to one, you cannot find their inverse. If the function is only unto, you cannot find their inverse. Now, let us see here what will happen here. Here is if inverse, if I have to find inverse, so can I find inverse function or not? Inverse function will define here or not. So, we can see here inverse function is defined here because for inverse this is domain this is co-domain so every element must have unique image as function defined so every element must have unique image so one has unique image two has unique image three has unique image yes so here is inverse function defined so from there what do we understand only the function which is 
1 to 1 and unto then only we can find their inverse so to find the inverse so what is the condition of what is the condition to find the inverse so we, you can write condition to find the inverse condition to find the inverse what is the condition so condition is function should be function should be 1 to 1 1 2 condition to find inverse so function should be 1 to 1 1 2 then only we can find inverse so first of all we have to check the function is 1 to 1 1 2 is it 1 to 1 1 2 or not you 1 to 1 1 2 chha ki chaina bhanera pahile check garnu paryo before finding the inverse okay let us take some function and we have to see that either it is 1 to 1 or not if 1 to 1 then we have to find their inverse suppose i will write fx is equal to x square if i will say fx is equal to x square it is their, their function is defined as here domain is x belongs to r if real number for all real number then this is not a one to one function because we can check we know that in the previous exercise how to check it, the function is one to one or not to check function is one to one or not we can do if fx is equal to we can check right now so fx if let x 1 and x2 belongs to r then so fx1 is equal to fx2 we can take fx1 is equal to fx2 this implies what will happen x1 square is equal to x2 square so what you will get here so x1 is equal to plus minus x2 we will get for one to one what we have to show if fx1 is equal to fx2 implies x1 must be equal to x2 but here x1 is not only equal to x2 x1 is equal to x x2 as well as minus x2 so uniquely x1 uniquely equal to the x2 but x1 is not so here this shows that x1 is equal to x2 as well as x1 is equal to minus x2 so this does not prove that this function is one to one so here we cannot say that this function is one to one if x1 is equal to one to directly we if we can say because the, the domain is real number and the range is also real number so then x1 is equal to x2 x1 is equal to minus x2 so x1 is equal to the both of the function so that is why this is not a one to one function so now how to make this function one to one we can make this function one to one so by restricting the domain if we restrict the domain x belongs to the natural number then we can say that yes it is a one to one function that we did before so i will remove that x belongs to r so i will just put here the natural number then we can say that this function is a one to one function okay now see i just change their domain as a natural number i just change their domain as a natural number then we can say that yes this function is one to one function so if this is one to one then only one to one and you can say that so if only one to one where is unto yes so every polynomial function is unto function every polynomial function what is the polynomial function so polynomial function the power of x is if power of x is positive integer in any expression where power of x power of variable is positive integer then that is called the polynomial function all the polynomial functions are unto function so it is one to one because this is polynomial so as this is unto also so fx of x is unto now how to find the inverse function so let's check 
x belongs to the natural number or you can say there is x is greater than 0 for x is greater than 0 so there is or, or just say x is greater than 0 it is okay x, x belongs to n so now let how to find inverse let y is equal to x square there is one method that we are using mostly interchanging x and y so first do by this method interchanging x and y so interchanging x and y means y becomes x wherever the y becomes x wherever the x becomes y change so interchange so interchanging x and y so now that becomes x that becomes y so y is square now we have to find the value of y now we have to find the value of y so what is the value of y y is equal to plus minus square root of x y is equal to plus minus square root of x so let's see because if we put x belongs to the natural number here x belongs to the natural number if we put x natural number here always we will get the value of y we'll get the value of y because after interchanging after interchanging this so that becomes always positive number so we have to remove negative sign from here because the domain is the natural number so domain is the natural number so in the place of this is in the place of the domain now so so domain must be the domain must be natural number so natural number is the positive so you have to remove negative sign here so y is equal to square root of x so this is called this is the inverse function so now this y is called just like this y fx is called y here so now this y is called inverse this y is called inverse so f inverse x is equal to a square root of x so this way we can find inverse function real valued function what is called real valued function if f is defined from a to b f is defined from a to b is called real valued function real valued function real valued function if for all values of fx if for all values of fx must belongs to the real number for every x belongs to a so f is defined from a to b is called real valued function if for all values of fx every value of fx must belongs to the real number r is the real number here for every x belongs to a that function is called real valued function for example for example we can say that absolute function is a real valued function so what is called absolute function so fx is equal to modulus of x what is the value of modulus of x modulus of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 minus x if x is less than 0 this function is called real valued function for any values of x that will give real valued we can take the polynomial function many function we can give the example of the real valued function suppose or let f is defined from some d to r or g is defined from some domain to real number this r to real 
वैल्यूड फंक्शन आर टू रियल वैल्यूड फंक्शन एंड के बी एनी रियल वैल्यूज देन वी हैव टू सी सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन ऑफ द फंक्शन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी कैन सी दैट सो एफ एक्स एफ एक्स प्लस के इफ लाइक दैट फंक्शन इफ एक्स प्लस के एक्स एंड के इज द रियल वैल्यू कैन बी रिटर्न एज एफ एक्स प्लस के वेर के इज रियल वैल्यू फंक्शन फॉर दैट वी कैन टेक वन एग्जाम्पल सपोज एफ एक्स इज एक्स प्लस थ्री एफ एक्स इज गिवेन एक्स प्लस थ्री नाउ वी हैव टू फाइन एफ एक्स प्लस फोर सो एक्स एफ एक्स प्लस फोर दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज एफ एक्स प्लस फोर सो वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एफ एक्स हियर एक्स प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर इज इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस सेवन सो दिस प्रोपर्टीज विल वर्क लाइक दैट ओके सो नाउ एन अदर प्रोपर्टीज वी कैन सी मोडलस ऑफ एफ एक्स मोडलस ऑफ एफ एक्स इज कॉल्ड मोडलस ऑफ एफ एक्स दिस टाइप ऑफ प्रोपर्टी वी कैन यूज सो मोडलस ऑफ एफ एक्स कैन बी डिटेन मोडलस ऑफ एफ एक्स सपोज सेम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ एफ एक्स इज आई विल टेक एफ एक्स इज एक्स माइनस फाइव एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड मोडलस ऑफ एफ टू दैट वी हैव टू फाइंड मोडलस ऑफ एफ टू टू इज इन द प्लेस ऑफ x so how this property work is equal to modulus of f2 is it okay now modulus of f2 how to find f2 f2 in the place of x if i will put 2 so 2 will go here so 2 minus 5 is there so 2 minus 5 becomes modulus of minus 3 that becomes because we know that modulus function always gives a positive result is 3 so modulus of minus 3 becomes 3 if you don't know how to give modulus function minus 3 always positive let's i will explain here what is the definition of modulus function so modulus of x is equal to the definition of modulus of x is x if x is greater than equal to 0 modulus of x is equal to minus x if x is less than this is the definition okay so i will take some values of x here suppose i will take x is equal to 3 just positive number this is positive greater than 0 so we have to find modulus of 3 3 is in the place of what 3 is in the place of x 3 is in the place of x so and 3 is what greater than 0 3 is in the place of x And three is greater than zero means x is greater than zero. So x is greater than zero. So modulus of x becomes x. So modulus of three becomes three. So modulus of positive three becomes three. If I will take minus three, what will happen? Minus three is in the place of what? Minus three is also in the place of x. So in the place of x there is minus three. This is less than zero or greater than zero? Obviously negative. So less than zero. Minus three is in the place of x, and x is negative. If x is modulus of x, x is negative, then modulus of x becomes minus x. So modulus of x becomes minus x. What is our x? Minus three, minus three. So minus minus plus that becomes three. So this way we understand always modulus sign gives positive result. Now. third property a function is there so is f n x is equal to 
we can write this can be written as fx to the power n. So for example, how can we apply this? So let fx is suppose x plus 1. And we have to find n means n is integer here, any integer, n is integer. We can write here n is integer, not one, yeah, integer you can say there. Okay, so now fx is equal to x plus 1. And we have to find f2x. What is this then? Use properties that becomes fx to the power 2. What is the value of fx here? What is the value of fx here? So fx is x plus 1. So x plus 1 whole square can be, you can explain, expand this, that is x square plus 2x plus 1. So this way we can find f and x. Now let's see third, fourth property is there. If there is f plus g x is equal to, we can write f x plus or you can say minus also, fx minus gx. f plus gx, then fx plus gx. If minus, then you can write fx minus gx. So for that, by showing in example, suppose fx is 2x and gx is x plus 1. Then how we can find? We have to find f plus g x. So what is f plus g x? So f plus g x is f x plus g x. What is f x? What is f x? This is 2 x. What is g x? x plus 1. So 2 x plus x becomes 3 x plus 1. So this way we can find f plus g x is equal to 3 x plus 1. Now we can take another example as there is 3, 4 and 5 we can write there f z x this is product can be written as f x times g x you can say if there is for example same f x and g x if i will take same f x and g x if I will take here, then what will happen? So, f g x can be written as f x g x. What is f x? 2 x. What is g x? x plus 1. Just multiply it. So, 2 x square plus 2 x. This way we can find f g x. Now, another 6. If there is f over gx, what we can write? fx over gx. So same way we can do that. Another properties is kfx. Kfx can be written as k times fx. So all these properties we can apply for a function, for a real valued functions. So in the real valued functions, if it is written like that fgx, not only fg, if fgh, many functions are there, all the functions can be multiplied here. So here is adding f plus, even subtracting, you can subtract. Okay, so now composite function. Let's see here. Composite function. What is called composite function? So composite function is the combination of two or more than two functions. Let's see here. By arrow diagram, first we have to understand what is composite function is this. So this is one set. There is another set. And one more. So there is a function f. There is another function g. So if, 
for this function if the domain is x f carry x that becomes fx x is a domain of that function fx is the range of that function or their image is this now g says so g is g mapped from this set to that set yahan bata yahan map garnu cha ulai so g carry the element from here and map to that one so fx is here so g carry fx so g carry fx becomes fx yeah so there is g fx so x carry f becomes fx g carry f becomes g fx so what is the composite combination so combination composite function means we have to we need to know some functions which directly gives x to g fx that is called composite function so here is if we combine from directly from x to this that is called composite function that is written as from here to here this is written as g composite f many of them is read as the different way g circle f g composite f g o f in many way so but you can say that g composite f g composite f x this x carry to this becomes g f x this is called composite function if f is defined from one set to other set g is defined from that set to the other set and if you combine this that becomes g composite f x that is called just simply we can understand the composite function is this now you have given by example i will show you how to do that suppose for example i will write here suppose f is defined from suppose i will write in the different way so you have to know you have to understand how to represent in different way i will write different function f is defined from x to x plus 1 and i will write g is defined from x to x square and we have to find just find find g composite f x that we have to find so let's let's see here if it is written like that what does it mean f is defined from x to x plus 1 what does it mean so it means you can write here fx is equal to x plus 1 this is gx is equal to x square either this way or that way gx is equal to x square what do we mean by written fx is equal to x plus 1 what do we mean by this so let's see here so you have to be clear what does it mean so x is the input x is the input whatever the value you put here you will the f what f will do f is an operator it operate x and what what you will get whatever the input you will give f says i will give you one i will add it one on the input there suppose i will put there two here f will give me 2 plus 1 if i will put there 4 f will give me 4 plus 1 whatever if i will put f mango here so mango plus 1 so whatever the value whatever things i will put here f will added one there so that that is the definition of that function what is the definition of that g here how g is defined themselves here whatever you will put inside of this g make them square x x square if y y square if z z square 2 2 square 3 3 square so that we have to understand now we have to find g composite fx how to find let's see here g composite fx can be written as first g just remove o and put bracket and write fx very simple what is the value of fx directly you can put here in the place of fx write x plus 1 in the place of fx so g x plus 1 in the place of fx x plus 1 now what you will do let's see here g says that whatever you will give me i will make them square so what we are going to give ami ke di ra chu ji lai ji bancha ami lai malai je dinchau tesko ma square gar dinchu so what we are going to give we are going to give x plus 1 so what g will do 
some some students will do mistake here like x square plus 1 no that is a mistake so what g what g will do here g will do here whatever you will give me i will make whole them make them a square so we are just going to give x plus 1 so g will do x plus 1 whole square so there is x plus 1 whole square so that way we have to do so this is this way we can find so g composite fx is g x plus 1 whole square either we can we can leave this way or we can expand this okay let's see one question there is let a function f is defined from r to r be defined by y is equal to fx becomes 2x minus 3 for all x belongs to r that is the domain find the formula that defines the inverse function so just I explained before how we can say that this function has an inverse. What is the condition to find the inverse? So we know that to find the inverse function should be 1 to 1 on 2. So first of all we have to prove that this function is 1 to 1 on 2. So solution here. So to find 1 to 1 on 2 so we can take some domain value there is let x1 x2 belongs to r that is that is called domain from from that r x1 x2 belongs to r now then how to prove one to one that we did before so what is that fx1 is equal to fx2 we can take this implies this implies fx1 is equal to fx2 implies fx1 is equal to what 2x1 minus 3 is equal to what 2x2 minus 3 so what will happen minus 3 minus 3 get cancelled here so 2x1 is equal to 2x2 so x1 is equal to x2 so fx1 is equal to x fx2 implies x1 is equal to x2 and so this shows that and so hence function is 1 to 1 the function is 1 to 1 now what now we have to prove onto function so to prove onto function so so y is equal to x minus 3 y belongs to that r in the range set in the codomain so we have to take any values of y that belongs to this so i will take any p let let p is equal to 2x minus 3 let p is equal to 2x minus 3 so p belongs to that and x belongs to that r in the domain so now we have to find the value of x let's check now here we have to say p belongs to r now we have to find the value of x so what is the value of x here so p plus 3 divided by 2 x is equal to p plus 3 divided by 2 so here x is equal to p plus 3 divided by 2 and p belongs to r now let's think for any real values of p for any real values of p what you will get the result that result is also real number so you can say that x is equal to p plus 3 over 2 is also belongs to real number for any for any values of p for any values of p belongs to r so what do we say that so unto function unto function it means we proved that for any values for any values of p we have their pre image for onto function for every for every values of the codomain must have pre image then that function is onto so for any values of p we get x x belongs to that that is why we can say that that function is a onto function so so the function is function is onto so the function is one to one as well as two. Hence, so thus we can say that this function has an 
Thus, we can say that. Thus, the function is the function has an inverse. Thus, the function has an inverse. So, we have to prove this function has an inverse or not. So, we prove that this function has an inverse. Now, we have to find the inverse function. So, after that, we will show that how to find the inverse function. Okay. Now, we have to find inverse. So, one or another way also we can do. Y is equal to 2x minus 3. To find the inverse, just we have to solve for x. Just solve for x. Solve for x means you have to make x the subject. Or you can say you have to find the value of x in terms of y. So, you have to say that solve for x. Solve for x means what is the value of x here? So, x is equal to y plus 3 divided by 2. y plus 3 divided by 2, x is equal to. So, this is the x is equal to y plus 3 divided by 2. So, this function, this function is called now inverse function. This is called inverse. Now you can write this as a f inverse. You can write now f inverse y is equal to y plus 3 over 2. But in this function, this y is called dummy variable. Dummy variable means you can replace y by any variable. We have to find f inverse x. So now because this is in terms of y, that is why I wrote f inverse y. But we have to find if the question says you have to find f inverse x, so in the place of y, if you write x, so that becomes x plus 3 over 2. If you write z, z plus 3 over 2. So any variable we can. So here is the function is called this function is this variable is called the dummy variable. So dummy variable is you can replace by any variable. So because we have to find f inverse x, so you replace y by x, then x plus 3 over 2. That is called inverse. So, we found the inverse of that function. Okay. So, now let's see one question here is find the domain and range of a given function. So, one function is given fx equal x square minus 6x x plus x, 6. We have to find their domain. So, first of all, we have to understand that I also said before. If any function is a polynomial function, if any function is a polynomial function, the domain is all real number. So here you don't need to find what is the domain. So in this case, you have to find the domain is all real number. Since you have to write like that, since the function is function is a polynomial function. polynomial function so such that such that since the function is a polynomial such that domain is is all real number so you can write like that x belongs to r or in the interval you can say that x belongs to minus infinity to infinity. This is the domain. x belongs to minus infinity to infinity. You can take any values as a domain. Now, how to find range? To find range, let's see here for range. For, okay, right. For range. So, y is equal to x square minus 6x plus 6. So, you know how to do the complete square. So, if this is quadratic, so we have to go through the complete square form. So, how to do complete square? I think you know how to do complete square. So, I can do directly that is x minus, let's see, let's learn here how to do complete square directly. Divide 6 by 2, result is 3 write 3 here square 
and always if there is minus put minus if here is plus so put plus here but always here minus here is 3 so write 3 square and plus 6 so there is x minus 3 whole square 9 minus 9 plus 6 is how much minus 3 so y is equal to x minus 3 whole square minus 3 is the complete square now let's see range means we have to say domain means we have to say the value of we have to we have to say about the about x what value of x we can take here and range means we have to say for what value of if we'll put the value of x what what value of x what is the all the possible value of y we have to find what is the possible value of y so here is so logically we have to say that let's see here x minus 3 this is whole square this is whole square so this is called perfect square so can you say for any values of x can you say for any values of x for any values of x x minus 3 whole square is positive or negative so you know if any numbers have a power even power always gives positive results so you can say that x minus 3 whole square is greater than 0 even you can say greater than equal to 0 for any values of x this value becomes never becomes negative always greater than equal to 0 either 0 or greater than 0 what is the minimum value of that one then the minimum value is 0 a minimum value is 0 so 0 minus 3 is minus 3 so value of y is minus 3 so if you take the minimum value of that is the minus 3 then their value will increase if their value is increase so this minus 3 suppose 1 3 minus uh, suppose i will write here 2 so 2 minus 3 becomes 1 minus 1 so 1 minus 3 becomes minus 2 so what is happening there the value of y is increasing or decreasing here let's check the value of y is increasing or decreasing their value will start from 0 their value is 0 then minus 3 if their value is 1 the 1 minus 3 is minus 2 if their value is suppose 2 their value is 2 minus 3 becomes minus 1 if their value is 3 0 if their value is 4 1 oh so from there we can see that their value is increasing the value of y is increasing now we have to see that from where it is increasing so what is the least value of y is there so least value of y we can say that minus 3 can you say any values less than minus 3 you can't say you can take any values if i will take the value of x is 3 3 minus 3 becomes 0 so this value their value minimum value of x minus 3 is 0 so 0 minus 3 is minus 3 so either the value of y will increase from minus 3 or decrease from so we have to check their value is increasing or decreasing so here is the value of y is increasing from minus 3 so from here we can say that the y is so x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 so this shows that so from there directly we can say that so range is so y is from here y is greater than and equal to minus 3 y is greater than or equal to minus 3 for what for any values of x for any values of x for any values of x the y is greater than or equal to minus 3 so this way we can find range if we have to find the if you have to write the range in interval then how can we write so we can write y belongs to greater than minus 3 so greater than minus 3 is equal to sign is here so you have to put here close bracket greater than minus 3 up to infinity so up to positive infinity so always infinity is closed by open bracket or open by open bracket so we cannot put there close bracket so y belongs to minus 3 to infinity so this way we can find range so we have to find their domain and range so domain is for polynomial function all real number and the range we can find this way in this case there is another way also in the further different function we can find another way also okay
let's see another question to find domain and range y is equal to fx x square minus 4 over x minus 2 so here how to find domain here what is it if the polynomial function we don't need to find domain the for polynomial function all real numbers are their domain but in the particular case we have to find their domain let's see here in this case x square minus 4 over x minus 2 for what value of x this function is not defining here so if the function is a rational function if the function is a rational function so we have to be careful the denominator should not be zero for some certain values of x that we have to find so for what value of x denominator is zero there so here you can say directly x is equal to 2 but in different case directly you can't say that for what value of x is 0 so how to do so you can do there so first of all you have to do x minus 2 is equal to 0 and solve this then you will get x is equal to 2 here in this case you can say directly but suppose this is a quadratic so you have to find what value of x makes this 0 so this makes 0 and solve then whatever the value of x you will get that value makes denominator 0 so this function is not getting going to define at x is equal to 2 so in this case this function has a domain all real number except 2 because at x is equal to 2 this function is not defined so you can say that this function is a so domain of this function is domain of the function is all real number except 2 it is written like that r minus 2 or minus infinity to infinity minus 2 this way we can write so domain of the function is all real number except 2 if you write in the language then also okay or r minus 2 is there so minus infinity minus 2 is also there now how to find their range so to find the range to find range y is equal to x square minus let's simplify this can i write x square minus 4 can be x plus 2 x minus 2 over x minus 2 there so x minus 2 x minus 2 get cancelled so y is equal to x plus 2 is only there y is equal to x plus 2 so here we have to say that for all real number for all so x is equal to for at x is equal to 2 y is not defined for x is equal to 2 y is not defined here so we have to find the range so value of y so if we'll take any values of real number so all real numbers so y will also gives all real number but we are not putting x is equal to 2 here if we'll put x is equal to 2 the function is not defined so if we'll put x is equal to 2 the y value of y is 4 so it means we can, we don't have because x is equal to 2 input we don't have 2 we can't put 2 here so if we, if we if we can't put 2 here then the value of 2 will give you what here 4 y is equal to 4 it means also 4 we are not getting here 4 pani hami paudaina 2 hami sanga chaina 2 chaina bhane ta 2 rakhna paudaina the 2 rakhna paudaina 2 rakhera ke auncha bhayeko value 4 auncha banale 4 hami lina paudaina so for in this case x is domain is all real number so all real numbers so y is also all real number but we can't put 2 here in all real number 2 is not there we can't put the value of x is 2 if we we'll put 2 we will get 4 so it means the value of y also will not get value of y is 4 so we can say that here is the range is range is all real number except what except what except 4 so range you can write range is equal to you can write real number minus 4 or you can say that another way 
माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू इन्फिनिटी माइनस फोर दिस इज द रेंज ऑफ दैट फंक्शन सो डोमेन एंड रेंज वी कैन फाइंड दिस वे फॉर सिंप्लीफाई दिस एंड चेक फॉर वट डोमेन डायरेक्टली वी कैन गेट हियर सो वाई इज एनी वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई वी कैन गेट हियर फॉर डिफरेंट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स बट वी कैन पेट पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इज टू सो हियर ऑल रियल नंबर एक्सेप्ट फोर इज द रेंज ऑफ दैट ओके सो नाउ देर इज अनदर टाइप ऑफ फंक्शन वी हैव टू फाइंड दियर डोमेन एंड रेंज फर्स्ट आई गेव वन क्वेश्चन दैट इज जस्ट अ पोलिनोमियल फंक्शन सो देयर डोमेन इज जस्ट वी कैन फाइंड बिकॉज सिंस पोलिनोमियल सो वी कैन राइट डोमेन इज ऑल रियल नंबर अनदर फंक्शन देर इज रेशनल फंक्शन In that case, we have to say that the denominator we have to make it zero, and what value of x we make the denominator zero. Except that value, we can find. We can say that the domain, all real number, except that. But there is another type of question here. If there is a square root is given, so in that case, to find the domain, we have to think. So for domain, let's see here. For domain, what we know that this is square root. We know that under the square root, we the value should not be negative. The value of this should not be negative. That value couldn't be less than zero, negative. So what? This value always greater than zero. So we have to take that first. Twenty one minus four x minus x square must be greater than equal to zero. This value is always greater than equal to zero. Now we have to solve this for what value of x? This is always greater than equal to zero. That is the domain of that function. What value of x makes this expression positive? That is the domain of that function. So it means we have to solve this inequality. So how to solve this inequality? So there is. So first of all, better to do by completing a square. So how to do complete a square here? So minus x square. So if everything I will take this side, or I will take minus sign common here, that becomes x square plus 4x minus 21 is greater than or equal to zero. So we know the inequality if minus sign is here. So to multiply minus sign both side, sign of inequality will change. That becomes x square plus 4x minus 21 is less than or equal to zero. Now we have to convert in a complete square form. There is how to convert in complete square? Just I did before. How to do complete square? X square. Just write x. Whatever the sign plus, so write plus. If minus, so minus. So plus. Divide 4 by 2. That is 2. So write 2, not x. Just. See the coefficient. Four, four divided two becomes two, and make this a square. But always here minus because two is here. So there two a square we have to write here. Two a square. Two a square is four. So may I write directly? So this is four minus twenty one is less than or equal to zero. So this is x plus two whole a square. I will take this this side is less than or equal to. 25. So there is x plus 2 whole square is less than equal to. May I write like that? 5 square. Okay. So now let's see. There is one formula for this inequality. We can use this here. X square is less than equal to a square can be written as minus a is less than equal to x is less than equal to a. X square is less than equal to x square can be written as minus a is less than equal to x is less. That we have to apply here. So what we can write? This whole is supposed to be x. X square is less than equal to a square. So that is minus five is less than equal to x plus two is less than equal to five. So then minus two we have to do. How do we have to simplify this? We have to find the value of x. So we have to do minus two both side. So minus five minus two five minus two cancel. So that is minus seven 
is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. So this is the domain. So we can say that the domain of a function is domain of a function is minus 7 minus 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. This can be written as in the interval close bracket minus 7 and 3. This is the domain of that function. So this way we can find domain. Now after that we have to find range. Okay. So now for range this is squaring both sides we have to do here y is equal to this. So let's do a squaring both sides. So y square is equal to 21 minus 4x minus x square. I will take these things this side. So, okay, so y square is just only here. So, this is minus x square minus 4x plus 21. Again, we have to do complete a square here. That becomes minus sign. I will take this outside. That becomes x square plus 4x minus 21 so y square is equal to minus their complete square we did before what is that x plus 2 whole square minus 25 we did before now open the bracket x y square is equal to minus so this minus plus i will write 25 here minus x plus 2 whole square y square is equal to this. So what we can see here, so <clears throat> for any values of x, we can see for any values of x, x plus 2 whole square is positive. x plus 2 whole square is positive, so greater than 0. So, so value, this value will increase from 0. So the value of y square will decrease from 25. So we can say that for a, so here we can write like that for any for any values of x x plus 2 whole square is greater than 0 or you can say greater than or equal to 0 for any values of x is x plus 2 whole square is greater than or equal to this value is positive and this value suppose minimum value is 0 then the value of y square is 25. If the more than 0, suppose I will take, take I will write there 5, then becomes is the value of y square is 20. So this way we can we can we see that the value of y square is decreasing. So value of y square is less than 25. This shows that value of y square is less than 25. So now so before doing that we have to remember about the domain what is the domain we found before the domain is minus 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to minus 7 to minus 7 to their value was uh, their minus 5 to 5 minus 5 minus 2 minus 7 5 minus 2 is 3 minus 7 to this is the domain this was the domain before we have. So now, so we can put only the value of x is minus 7 to 3. So but for any values of x, so for any, so we can say that here, minus 7 to 3, any values if you'll take, if you'll take minus 7, then what will happen there? 5, that becomes value of y square is 0. And if we'll put 3, so 5, again 0. So, so from here is greater than or equal to 0 we can say that y square is is less than y square is less than or equal to 25 so y square is less than 25 so if we'll take the value of y we can see from here the value of y value of y square is not coming below the zero so because according to the domain minus 7 to 3 so value of y square is not we are, we are not getting less than zero. So between, so we have to find, if we find by using this, using the same formula here like that, 
x square is less than equal to a square becomes minus a is less than x is less than a. So here is, so what is there? So we can write here this implies y square is less than equal to 5 square. That becomes minus 5 is less than equal to y is less than equal to 5. But we can see from here the value of y square cannot be. Suppose we'll put here, suppose we'll put here g, uh, minus 7 to 0, and that becomes 4. So 25 minus 4 is 21. So 25, so value of y square is 21. So square root of 21 is smaller than 5. So but the value of y square couldn't be less than 0, always positive y square is always positive we cannot take negative value here so minus y cannot be so y square is not negative so y square is not negative here so y is also not negative value here so we can see from the real number line there is this so is that minus 5 to 5 here is 0 so we can't take this negative value here so their range is we can take from 0 to the range is from 0 is less than equal to y is less than equal to 5. So range is from 0 to 5 or you can say in the interval 0 to 5. This way we can find their range. Okay. So <clears throat> there is one question. So let f is defined from r to r. Domain is the real number. Codomain is also real number. And g is also another function defined from r to r be defined by fx is 3x or minus 4 and gx is 2x minus 5. And we have to find f composite g and g composite f. So how to find f composite g? So before finding f composite g, first of all, we have to define fx properly. First, we have to understand how to define fx. f says, whatever you will give me, I will make them a square and multiply it by 3 and then I subtract 4. Suppose I will give to f a. So what f will do? He will f will do a square times three minus four. Suppose in the in this place, if I will write mango. So what will do? Three x here. So mango is here. Mango square minus four. Suppose I will write here in this place. If I will write x plus one. What will happen? 3 in this place x plus 1. So x plus 1 square minus 4. So this, the, if we understand this way, then we feel easy to do composite function. Let's see how to do f com composite function. Solution. f composite gx. That we have to find. So what to do? f gx. What we'll do now? In the place of gx, in the place of gx, we have to write 2x minus 5. So 2x minus 5. F 2x minus 5. Now let's see how f defined. F says whatever you will give me, first you will do their square and multiply by 3 minus 4. So what we are going to give? 2x minus 5. We are going to give here 2x minus 5. So what will happen? As f says 3, f says first write 3, then whatever you give me, their square, what we are going to give? 2x minus 5. So write 2x minus 5, what? A square, because this says that x, x square. If whatever mango, so mango is square. So there is 2x minus 5, so 2x minus 5 is square. 3, 2x minus 5 whole square. Minus 4. We have to define like that. 3, 2x minus 5 whole square minus 4. Either we have to leave this way or we can simplify more. So 3, so this is 4x square minus 10 to 20x plus 25 minus 4, that is 12x square minus 60x plus 75 minus 4, that is 12x square minus 60x plus 71. So this is called f composite gx. Now 
we have to find z composite f how to find z composite fx so how to write g composite z and fx what is fx fx is 3x square minus 4 so write in the place of fx first write fx first then g in the place of fx 3x square minus 4 now let's see what g how g is defined themselves g says whatever you will give me i will multiply them by 2 and subtract 5 whatever so what we are going to give 3 x square minus 4 so what g will do g will do multiply their input by 2 so what we are giving the input 3 x square minus 4 we are that is our input so g, what g will do g will multiply them by their input by 2 so by 2 minus 5 so minus 5 that is you have to open the bracket 6 x square minus 8 minus 5 that is 6 x square minus 13 so this way we can find g composite f and f composite g so this way we can solve both functions